Hi, my name is Andrew Wood and I'm Food Development Manager at the University of York. Ray Hardy, Executive Chef, and we're here today to uh, focus on One Planet Week uh, cookery demonstration. And the whole emphasis on today is using organic, uh, locally sourced ingredients, which we really like to champion here at the University. The integral, one integral ingredient we're going to uh, use today is, is a honey, and that will um, appear in the dessert and the main course. So before I introduce the dishes, uh, uh, the dessert and the main course, I'm going to ask Ray to tell you a little about this lovely honey that we've locally sourced for a champion supplier that we are using. So, hello everybody. Uh, so I found this honey from a guy called Joe Fennerty who runs the Food Circle, which is a little uh, cooperative sort of uh, farmer's market type thing down in Tangalore, about a 15 minute walk down from the university. He's got this from a farm in Terrington, which is about 10, 12 miles away from York. So it's all wildflower, it's the heather, so it's the pollination, it's from around us, lots of local health benefits, and very, very good for the planet. Lovely, thank you. All right, thanks, Ray. So I'm going to talk about the dish I'm going to do. I'm going to look after the dessert, and Ray's going to look after the, uh, uh, the, main, uh, the main course. So I'm going to do a really lovely, simple poached pear. Uh, I'm going to do that with a savion, like a rhubarb liqueur savion, but again, you can use anything, any booze you like, any, any sweet booze. Uh, and I'm going to serve that with a little cinnamon biscuit and what we call a nice little savion, which is just basically egg yolks with some, with some lovely honey that, that Ray just mentioned. So again, my dish is really, really simple. I'm just going to peel some pears, poach them in a really nice honey flavoured uh, poaching liquor, poach them so just cooked, and then I'm going to serve them with a the savion that I mentioned a bit earlier. So, before I hand you over to Ray, all I'm going to do is just tell you about this poaching liquor. And again, really, really simple. So in that pan there, I've got, uh, you can just throw it all in. I've done it easier so I can get the pear going. I've got my water in there. I've got my honey in there. Uh, I've got a quarter, half a zest of lemon, a bit of vanilla paste. And again, it's simple vanilla. You can buy in the stores. You can get a vanilla pod. This is just like a little paste we can buy. Or fairly nice, you can just get some uh, vanilla essence just to give it that bit of vanilla flavor. Uh, and I've also got uh, the water in there. And I'm going to show you how to peel the pears and just drop them in there so poach them nice and slowly. The whole point of this dish, don't boil them, uh, just simmer them nice and gentle on a, on a nice low roll. Okay, so I've got the techniques then. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pear, let's uh, speak it. So just take the pear and just really simply just peel the pear. And top and bottom. Now, the pear might be um, fairly ripe, it might be a little bit underripe. Depending on how ripe it is, just poach it for a little bit less. That's all you need to do. And all I'm doing is just pinning the pear from top to bottom, all right, like that. So just making sure all that skin's off using a peel like that. So I'm just left with the pear just like that. I'm just going to sit that on, on my bench like that. And I'm now going to take my uh, take my orange, and this is just zest and flavour the orange. So all I'm going to do there, again, just peel, take some zest off your orange like that. Use a peeler, or you can use the back of a knife if you want to. Okay, I'm just going to take that there. Then just run my knife over the zest like that. Just roughly top it, it's all about giving the, uh, the poached liquor a bit of flavour. Okay. I'm going to drop that into my pan, which is just simmering away now. I'm going to take the pear again and just drop that into the poaching liquor. Now, a clever little trick you do because we want the pear to make sure it uh, absorbs really well and sits underneath the uh, poaching pan. I'm going to make what I call a little cartoon, which is a bit of a posh name for what we say in the industry for making a little cartoon or a little circle of uh, paper. So take, take the part of paper, fold it, small little tear like that. I'm just making a circular little piece of paper to sit on top of the pears. So if you just have a look at that, I've got the pear, and I'm going to just drop a little bit of this lovely honey in there like that. Okay, and of course, the great thing about this liquor, you can keep it. You can use it for quite a few things. You can make a fruit salad with it afterwards, or again, keep it for when you do the pear again. 
So you can just see the pair just sat in there now with that lovely liquor, with the rhubarb essence, and you've got the uh, water, sugar, and the honey. I'm just going to sit, sit my little parchment there, and really pour it, like I said earlier, poach it nice and gentle for about 12 to 15 minutes, depending on the whiteness. And we'll hand it over to Ray now, who will start his main course. Right, so I've got all my bits weighed out here. I always like to start by having everything weighed out. I know where I'm at, make sure I've got everything, haven't missed anything. Get rid of Chef's little bits. So I'm using these lovely heritage or heirloom carrots. Uh, traditionally, all carrots were kind of that colour, and then we've humanly engineered them to uh, just become the standard orange. You can just use normal orange <coughs> carrots, any carrots are fine. If you're looking for a carrot about an inch in width, and if you're going in that size, you want to cut, you want to quarter them. So I've already peeled these. Obviously, just peel them. Going to whack off the ends and then we will go through into quarters. If it's a little bit of a thinner carrot, you can just go halves on those ones, just to make sure they're all cooked at the same time. And what I'll start by doing... So you're using fresh thyme, right, aren't you? I'm using fresh thyme. I've got some butter, just unsalted butter, some of the lovely honey again. I'm going to get that in the pan, I'm going to get that nice and bubbling, and then we're going to cook, cook our carrots in that. So while Ray's doing that, uh, as part of the recipe, um, we've made some lovely little cinnamon biscuits just to go with the pear. Uh, again, you can use anything, you can use little shortbreads, but we've just made the dough, uh, which, is, which is on the recipe which we'll send to you. I've just cut out some nice little uh, little biscuits, so uh, just a nice little crispy there. biscuit just to go with the pear. So I'll show you on the inside of one of these, amazing looking carrot. So that's what they look like. So this, this dish has sort of come about, it's a classic, a tart to town is usually a classic uh, apple dessert, French apple dessert. Uh, I've seen lots of different variations of it. You can do a red onion uh, tart to town, you could do a pear tart to town if you wanted. It's essentially a caramel set on whatever it is, your fruit or vegetables with a nice pastry lid. And then we're going to use some of this, again, lovely local Yellison's goat's cheese, which is from just outside of your box. Have that looking, Chef? Yep. Yeah. Okay, get rid of all these bits. Okay, so you can see that's starting to get a little bit of colour on it. Okay, we're going to chuck my carrots in there now. I'm going to add salt and pepper and the thyme. And then we'll give that a good old stir. This wants to be on about a medium-ish heat now that the uh, butter and the honey sort of melted. Otherwise you'll end up catching it, you'll burn the honey. We're just looking to toss all those carrots through that liquid until so they're all coated. And then I'm going to put a lid on and I'm going to cook that for about 10 minutes. Make sure you come back to it every few minutes. You want to give it a little stir, make sure it's not catching. Tell you about this Fantastic, all right, thanks Ray. So that, Ray's got his carrots cooking and he's gonna get his pastry on that a little bit later. So I'm just gonna give you a bit of a recap on where I am with the pear. So uh, 
The pairs I've got here, so these are the ones uh, that were done a little bit earlier. And again, you can just see there that the pairs are just nicely poached. You don't want to overcook them, uh, and they want to be just nice and soft. Quite a nice idea is that you just leave them to cool down in the liquor, and that way they absorb all their lovely little bit juices. So I'll show you how to prepare that in a minute. Uh, I've got the the biscuits here that I made, so they're part of the recipe are, that we're going to send to you. Again, that's like a cinnamon shortbread mix. I've just cut them out and baked those, but you could use anything, uh, any little crispy biscuits that you want to use. And then alongside the pear is a savion. So what we're going to do with the savion, we've got some, uh, I've got some four egg yolks in here. And all I've done is really simply, just take the crack an egg like that, and just take separate the yolks from the whites and just drop them in there like that. Good time, man. Sorry? Good time, fresh time. Yeah, and I just picked some uh, nice little 20 time, little thyme leaves in there and I've got some uh, a little bit of this rhubarb liqueur, so a little bit of a splash of that that will go in there just like that. But again you can use any sweet liqueur uh, that you want to add to that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this lovely honey and sit it in there. Now, what we say savion is just an emulsion really, and all we're doing is whisking that over a little bit of heat. Thank you, Ray. We're going to whisk that over a little bit of heat because we need to cook the egg, egg yolks. And as the egg yolk cooks and we introduce the air into it, we're going to get a nice, what we call a cooked savion. So just whisk it up there like, like that, get that going a little bit like that, mix it all up. And then I'm going to take it to my pan of water. So I've got a hot water here in the pan. And it's creating a little bit of steam. It's going to sit my bowl in there like that. And just gently, without the bowl touching the water so it's not scrambled, just gently whisk the eggs like that. The egg yolk. So get a nice light cup on. That usually takes about two or three minutes. But whilst I'm doing this, I get ready to show you the pear. That's just ticking away nicely on there. Will you show them that round? Yeah. So with your poaching liquor, all you're looking for, and if you can see it there, we've just got a few little bubbles coming to the surface right there. And that's all you're after when you're poaching. You don't want lots of bubbles, you don't want it rolling, but you also don't want it stagnant because it won't do anything really. It'll just kind of infuse rather than cook. Okay, so you're just looking for the odd little bubble to rise to the surface. Do you want me to prep one of these things for you, sir? Yeah, for one, yeah, thanks, Ray. Right, while, while Ray's prepping the pear, you can see now when I've just whisked this, uh, the egg yolks here, and the, uh, the thyme, and the uh, rhubarb, and the honey, and that's like a nice, light savvy on there. Got another 30 seconds to go whisking it, but the eggs are nice and lightly cooked. We've got some air in there, so we've got a nice, thick cream sauce, cream sauce for the egg yolks. Give them a nice, warm white. So for the pear, I'm going to go straight down the middle. Chef would always want you to go straight through that, just so you've got that nice little bit of presentation. But unless you've got a really sharp knife, it's quite difficult to do. And to be honest, it doesn't really get much difference. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight down here. I'm going to put a little V into it and try and take as much of that core out as I can while keeping the pear intact. So just be careful. Again, sharper than I could better, but I'm going to run a little bit in like that. And then you can just lick that out. Okay, and you just get rid of any of those little bits. Lovely, thank you. Right? So, you can just see now, there's a Savion. And it's really nice and light. It's really nice and light and fluffy. The flavour of thyme's coming through. I can taste some rhubarb liqueur in there, and the lovely honey sweetness of that has, has counteracted it and bounced it beautifully. So that is a whisk it has gone slightly cooler, so it's set, and that can just sit out on the side until you want to use it a little bit later. Okay. So these carrots, we're probably two, three minutes out now, but that is kind of what you're looking for in the bottom of that pan. Your honey, your butter is in there, a lot of the liquids come out of the carrots, and that's kind of what's cooking it. So you've got the heat from obviously the, from the flame, and then you've got a little bit of steam, so you have, you have steam in these carrots. 
We're going to carry on letting them go, and all you're looking for once it's cooked is for your knife to just be able to sort of push through, if you use the tip of a knife, push it in much like the pear, and just without any resistance really, and that's when you'll know they're cooked. They're going to get another half an hour once they're in the tray as well, once you've got the pastry on, so there will be more cooking process. So they want to be slightly, slightly undercooked. Check my plan, I was just checking the time. <coughs> So it's four minutes on that shot. Yeah, you're for it. Right, so I'm going to put the pair together. I know we're doing it a little way around, but we've just got to wait for the uh, uh, tart sand and to bring it all together. So uh, we've got the pair. So that's just like cooking there now. And do you remember I mentioned earlier where the pair can just sit in the liquor? So that pair now can just sit there and just finish off cooking and you get a, a nice, unctuous uh, soaked pear in all those lovely juices. So, I'm going to grab myself a plate and, like I said, raise, just taking the core out of the central pair. You're going to turn the pair around and you want nice little slices all the way through without going right to the top of the pair. Leaving it about half an inch from the top. I'm just going to slice that there like that, about 12 slices. I'm just going to fan it open like that. Take my savion, just sit it. In the bottom of the bowl. And my pair can sit in there like that. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the juices from the pair, from the kiss, just like on the pair like that. And it's a really, really simple dish. But the nice thing is, Brings all the flavours out of the pear and that lovely honey. A couple of discs of my cinnamon shortbread on there. And if you've got any sprigs of thyme left, just sit them over there. Like that. I've also got some honey comb if you want to use that, Chef. Yeah, thank you. So, again, Tell me about this honeycomb, Ray. So this, again, local, uh, this is a local beekeeper who, um, basically it's based in Buckthorpe, which is 10-15 miles outside of York, and this is straight honeycomb. So where that would go into a big drum and they spin it, they pull all the honey out of it, and then you sort of um, just drain that out. That's just straight from the hive. Straight from the hive, isn't it? It's lovely. So I'm just going to take a little bit off there like that, and just sit that on top of that pair. And it's really the good thing about this dish as well, you can prepare quite a lot of things in advance. You can poach your pear and leave that in the in the fridge and you can also make your biscuits a bit earlier. So there we have it, there we have poached pear with the honey savion, the cinnamon Cross biscuits it. and honey company. Good cross it Alright. There we go. Alright. Okay, so I'm ready for the next stage now in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my balsamic uh, and I'm going to kind of make a reduction and this will go almost syrupy. So we'll put that in. That'll mix with the honey. You'll see that's bubbling quite rapidly. Just give it a bit of a stir. Again, you're just looking to coat all the carrots in that lovely mixture. But what you want to do then is just turn up your heat a little bit and you're going to let that reduce. So that will bubble quite well. It won't take long. It can, if you over reduce it, it will be bitter. It will be horrible. So you're better off losing it, leaving it slightly loose, putting your carrots in, and then just putting the liquid on top. If you over reduce it, it'll burn. It'll be nasty. Try not to breathe in the fumes too much either because balsamic is uh, quite intense at the nose. Okay, so you can see here now. Do have that spoon, please, sir? Do you see here now? We've got that lovely sort of liquid at the bottom there. Okay? And the carrots are all lovely and glazed. So, I'm going to turn those out into my tray, which I've pre lined. I've just got a little bit of butter, a little bit of parchment on there.
looks nice. So have all your carrots facing the same way. It'll cook nice and evenly and it'll just look good when you uh, come to present it. Yeah, please. Now, obviously we've got loads of equipment. If you're doing it at home, it can be in anything. To be honest, it can be in the pan that you've cooked it in. You know, as long as you've got a metal, pan, metal handle that can go through the oven. Okay, so, you want to spread those out a little bit. I'll bring this over so you can have a seat. Don't use your fingers, we've all got asbestos fingers. Okay, so you're just looking for that. And then all I'm going to do is dot this lovely goat's cheek all over. You don't want loads all in the same place, you want a little bit of dotting here and there, and that way you'll ensure every time you go into it, you get a little bit of a different taste. Sometimes you get lots of goat's cheese, sometimes a little bit, it just makes it a bit more interesting to eat that way. Okay, so get that on there, that on there, I'll give my fingers a little bit of a clean. Then all I'm going to do is, I've got some puff pastry here. On the recipe, it's weighed out. It kind of doesn't really matter. Basically, all it needs to do is fit over the tray that you've got. Okay, so I'm going to take it off. This is all butter puff pastry. Now this dish, you could make it vegan if you wanted. I've tried it, I've done it with agave syrup. Take it out of the goat's cheese, use vegan pastry. So there is that option too, if you wanted to go that way. And then all you're going to do, is sit it on top, and kind of tuck it in. And then you've got your oven at 205 degrees, 200 degrees is fine, to 10, but you might want to watch your pastry a little bit if it goes any higher. So that's just tucked in like that. And just trying to make sure it goes underneath. It doesn't have to be super neat. In the kitchen, we would always trim those bits so that it's nicely presented. At home, that doesn't really matter. You've just got a nice crunchy bit of pastry. And then really important, just put a little slit in the top that allows some of that steam to come out. It makes sure the pastry has isn't overly wet so that it dries out a little bit and also just gets rid of some of the steam so the carrots don't overcook. So I'm going to put that in the oven, 25 minutes, 205 degrees and in true blue paper style. Here is one we made earlier. So if you can see, this looks like it's almost, almost too far. What you'll find is if you don't take it that to that kind of color, it will be wet, okay? So the pastry will be wet because of the amount of liquid that's still in there we'll start whilst it's still cooking. And what we're gonna do is, I'll use this. If you've got a decent sized chopping board, clap it on the top and flip it upside down. Get rid of that. Now, with all the best will in the world, it doesn't always work that well. Sometimes a carrot will stick in. Sometimes a bit of your pastry might get stuck, it's fine. Just get a little knife in, run it around. You'll see you've got these, which are super, super caramelized. I love that bit. Some people think that's taking a little bit too far. And then all we're gonna do with that, is go straight down the middle. And you can see all the colours of those lovely, lovely carrots in there. And that nice caramel. You've got your dots of goat's cheese. I'm going to nick that bit off there. I'm going to nick straight down the middle there. I would say that's four portions. But I may be being a bit greedy. Maybe get six out of that. And all we're going to do, whack that on there. And you can serve that with, if you see that there's lovely colours in your carrots running through there. I would serve that with a little bit of salad, any juice that's left in the bottom of your tray you can use as a dressing. And that's it, that's ready to go. Fantastic, thank you, right? So I'm just going to bring these two dishes together. Uh, and we really do hope you try these dishes at home. Please do. Uh, they are simple. I know we've probably made them look really easy. But please send your recipes in. Uh, email the recipes in and there will be a prize uh, for what we think will be the best recipes.
Okay, so enjoy, enjoy cooking. Again, any questions you might have, please drop us an email and we'll do our best to um, answer questions. But take these lovely ingredients, do some cooking, and let's see what, what you can do as well. Thank you.